The time is the late 1950s and three brothers work the fertile lands of the Wimmera in Western Victoria, Australia. It is the golden era of the tractor. They were part of a whole generation of industrious farmers. Men you've got to admire for their ingenuity, ability to work hard, resourcefulness and creativity. Men of character. And they didn't mind a bit of fun too. This is my dad Les and his two brothers, Ivan and Clary. And this is Grandad Bill. He was part of that last generation to drive the big horse teams. Dad's the last one left now. But they were all young once. And it was in those years that they built it. What they called the double header. So in 2002, we took Dad and Uncle Clary back to the museum where the tractor's kept. Made the video you can see in the link below. Tragically, Uncle Ivan had been killed in an accident back in the 80s. So we had a lot of great comments and questions from people, so we thought, let's take Dad back to the museum, update the story, and get a bit more detail. What do you reckon, Pip? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone very grateful for the interest that you have shown. Two tractors that we've hooked together so long ago now. Ivan and Flurry have now passed on, the only one left. And today we hope to answer a few of your questions. Now a bit of the backstory. The brothers were farming successfully in the Wimmera, a really productive farming area here in Western Victoria. This is some of the original footage from around the late 50s, early 60s. But always up for a challenge, they decided to buy a bush farm in South Australia. What was the reason for this? Oh, well we came to build this track there, we bought a scrub block on the uh, there's bush block, a scrub block in South East South Australia and uh, we want to develop it. But, uh, we're on our way into South Australia, yeah. there's a truck with a lot of trouble there by the look of it. Uh, down to the uh, farm that we're developing. Must be at the bush farm already, yes we're at the farm. Purchased it in 1958. Then the hard work began to get the land cleared. A super scrub like there got a very good view of it and uh, Don French the controls of that crawler tractor makes there they're dragging the chain first makes it a lot easier for them to have all the scrub flattened down. Now they'd bought this second hand English Fowler Challenger, a crawler tractor, for 1700 pounds from Adelaide. Oh, you see Clary's busy trying to get her to turn around on one track. It's keeping him busy. His problem's on sandy ground there. It's very light country in place. You can see how he's working to get her around. Oh, the brother Ivan, I can tell, is now at the controls here. So due to the wear and tear, a very, very uneconomical situation. And being wheat farmers, we were used to ordinary two-wheel drive tractors never had the traction of course so we had become aware of another tractor that uh, had tried this idea of putting two tractors together uh, the chap uh, about five six miles from our place he built to it for scooping dams and that so a bloke by the name of gordon mills came up to me one night and he said you know the fellow they went and saw he's still alive
My name is Vern Petzl. I was born here in 1933 at Deboola. And there in the shed, Vern Patchell was able to show me the original Massey double header that he'd engineered and that the brothers went and saw. And the amazing thing is he had this original colour footage taken by another local, Peter Adler. It shows Vern using this mighty machine to dig his dam. Well, I was doing a little bit of earth moving with one tractor and dual wheels later until I hit on, the, hit on the idea of two. I saw a boater in a power farming. Couldn't see the coupling, but it was two case, uh, case of Maddox joined up. And I thought, gee, that's not a bad idea. So, obviously you've got these two tractors here, Vern, and you've got to figure out a way to put them together, right? So you tell us, how did you do it? What did you do? Uh, well, I just made up an L piece coupling to fit in underneath with bits and pieces of steel and, yep. and then the steering uh, cylinders and just with an ordinary hydraulic valve and a lever. Uh, three point hitch hook up to uh, wind the nose up or down for uh, dam sinking. What was the idea behind building it? Why did you well, a single track you always had to watch the front axle that you weren't going to rear up coming out of dams with a loaded scoop. You always had to watch the front end, be ready with the clutch in case you're starting to rear. Uh, with a double header, you had no worries. You just uh, clambered up whatever it'll grip on. And uh, it really went well. The interesting thing Vern told me is there was another double header here locally before this one. There might have been one other one put together before me. That passed on now. Uh, David Peach, Kalalik, he joined a couple of Oliver 80s. Anyway, clearly it was a great inspiration for the brothers and full credit to Vern. So we decided we'd have a go ourselves with two L-case tractors we had of approximately 80 horsepower each. And, uh, and so we decided to see if we could hook, uh, hook them together. This is where the front axle was attached. It had a radius rod. All that's been discarded. Now here's the first support that we realised we had to make. You had to be very strong to hold that front tractor up. Made with a lower line box section either side. You've got three pieces of iron in parallel being gusseted here. Box section steel here. Didn't go for the ball joint. It wasn't strong enough. We built a support, went underneath the gear case. Now, of course, we required something for the front tractor to oscillate for steering. We wanted something pretty sturdy. My brother Les, he had the biggest problem there for the steering of it. And it's the back end of an old Ford uh, truck there with the dip taken out and the two back uh, axles, uh, bearings are top and bottom for turning. Rear wheel of a, of a hub of a motor truck. And the both axles were then welded together here. The live axle went down the centre. Done the same thing down below. Cut a certain amount of the hub off and it's bolted fastening to the back of the front L case tractor. The process of figuring out the steer. Well, yeah. we knew that it had to be hydraulically steered. When we were putting this unit into the workshop, as I was at the front trying to drag it around manually, to steer it, Clary was at the back on the clutch. And so we fitted two hydraulic rams either side, connected up to a hydraulic at the back, power troll steering here. So as you would turn this? Yep, and that sends the oil into one so or the other. The left side to go on left yeah. and the right going right. Into the cylinder. The power troll forces oil into here and pushes that tracked around to the left. Did you struggle to do that at all? Or oh, I believe that we didn't need to have as big a cylinder as we had. Steering wheel is not the original taken off of a W6 McCormick steering, nicer steering wheel. But now you see the stones in that country. And this is where that tractor operated very, very well in that stony country. Now, of course, it had a word rough country, as you can see on the uh, video. Came off of a Liberator bomber that was used to bomb Japanese-held territory. We had thought putting a tread on. But if we'd had ordinary uh, traction grips on, it would have been a long way better. But anyway, it did do the job. Of course, these tyres required centres. So we had these old steel wheels cut the outside of the steel wheel away. We fitted the centre on, did the job. Well, what's 
sort of welder did you use? Lincoln, driven with a Ford V8 engine that we fitted up. I mean, this is pretty amazing. You've got this back tractor, you're sitting back here. Yeah. And then how are you supposed to actually control the front tractor? We'll come around here again. It was before electric starters were fit, called an Armstrong starter. So you'd start the front tractor, clutches were both open, you would get on the back tractor case where the most suitable track I'd made a clutch system was known as a wet clutch. Tractor could stand, engine running, clutch opened up, very helpful to up. And then the tractor would move off and that would start the rear tractor, it's either standing still or a full working power. So it didn't cause any strain? No, 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 because it's, it was strong enough. One four-wheel unit. So after a bit of engineering, some strategic welding with help from my mate. Graham Swats is there welding. And a coat of paint, the double header, was launched. Completed jobs coming out and being steered instead of someone pushing it in front. And even the way they transported it showed a bit of creativity. Oh, well, yeah, I went up there when they loaded it onto the Maple Leaf truck, and there's more tractor hanging out the back than there is on the tray, really. So it made it to the bush farm, and it did the job. And there you are, you see these tractors again going over stumps and stones and whatnot, and, and it frees you to think of driving there with a tractor normally, but those double-header tractors did an exceptionally good job. You know, when I think about Dad and his brothers and Vern and all the blokes from that generation, they really have a lot to teach us about working hard, being resourceful. It's just, just impressive men. Impressive men. Not every farmer is, uh, an, e is an engineer, you know. Yeah, yeah. Certain ones, it, it shines out. It's amazing what they develop and get going and build their own spryers, all sorts of stuff, you know. Most it comes out of there head and you take a few measurements and you start working on putting it together. So it was a time in history you had to be pretty resourceful? Ah oh, yes, yeah. yeah, we were, yeah. yeah. Probably spoiled a bit today, it's all there in front of them as long as they can afford to buy it, you know. Well at the end of the day, the brothers and I were very, very happy with the twin tractors that we put together. They served the purpose and did a fantastic job for us. So as the doors begin to close in that era, we we'll just give credit to the ingenuity, values and character of that generation. Thanks for watching. Feel free to add any comments or questions you have below. And if you enjoyed the video, would value your support by having you press subscribe. Thanks. Thank you.